right, so the idea for this beat started when I just woke up one morning and I had an idea for a melody in my head and I just opened up Audacity here and I just recorded into the mic literally. And I even had the little dum 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 in my head, so I think I recorded it like that as well. Um, so that's always a good way to start is if you have a melody in your head just so you don't forget it and like lose the essence of what you were trying to do open up audacity or whatever recording software you have and just sing it out real quick it's not, it doesn't have to be perfect just enough to jog your memory give you that total recall to be able to pull that uh, that idea back out and, and make it real so the first thing i did was try to get that melody out i started with a flute um, I'll have all of these sounds uh, available in the description below. These are all just regular sound fonts, except for TPS module, which is a free VST. So all this stuff, all the sounds I used are free, everything. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to get all these. I'll keep the percussion to myself. I'll just let you know that I found most of these on Reddit, um, but that's the sauce. Go through a bunch of kits on Reddit and dig out the good ones. Uh, but these, I'll link in the description. I got some violin strings, a flute, uh, two flutes basically, and then some brass and then more brass with the TPS module. But I start off with just a Mellotron flute. Regular one. Now here, here it is without effects before I mixed it. Sounds kind of fake. Um, I didn't do a whole lot really. All I did was uh, I cut out the bass with a parametric EQ. I put some reverb on here. If you want to look at the settings here, I just started with the default and played with it until I got it to sound good. Um, important things to play with are the high and low cut, and of course the size and the dry and wet. Turning down the dry really helped clean out some of those more synthetic sounding hits and filled it out with that wet reverb. It also gave it a stereo image, whereas it didn't have one before. Sounds fantastic. And a lot of the sounds, you know, you're not going to find a perfect sound for everything. Uh, a lot of it comes from just writing. As you can see here, like, it's a clever little jump I did. You know, making it sound natural like it would be played on an instrument is probably the most important thing. A lot of that just comes with practice and learning about specific instruments. Um, but I knew, you know, I knew what I was going for because I had the riff in my head too, so that helped. Yeah, really easy there. Um, everything else I added is strings. So we'll go to the string pattern here. Um, I just have these kind of marcato hard violins. These are just minor chords into it's two minor chords and then a diminished chord here at the end. So D minor, C sharp minor, I believe. Let me just double check my work there, make sure those are minor chords. No, these are major chords. So Wow, I was wrong. D major, C major, and then I believe this is a diminished chord. F diminished, yeah. And uh, that again just came from hearing it in my head when I wrote the riff, and then um, I, I can only sing the root notes, you know, one at a time, so I went dum 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 And then from there, I, I just built the chords along with the riff. made sure it harmonized and uh yeah i was happy with it oh and there was also this second layer here it's uh strings lyrical so i just wanted to have some softer more like realistic vibrant strings behind those hard hits so. and here they are together you know just a little touch up i planned on doing some touch-ups throughout this video i'm actually going to pan this one a little hard to the left this one a little hard to the right I'm gonna turn these up a little bit. A little wider, more beautiful stereo image. Let's hear that all together now. Might turn the whole thing down a little bit here. Beautiful. Right, so the next thing I started to work on after I had the riff out and done uh, was I wrote my bass line. Um, this is just like a regular kind of Lex Luger, maybe, I don't know, Zaytoven type 808. Uh, just found it in a pack from Reddit. It was already tuned to C. Uh, if it wasn't tuned to C, I would, you know, play another sound that I know is tuned, like my flute or whatever. 
then adjust the pitch from there. But uh, thankfully, I didn't have to. So I just played from my root note of F sharp. I'll put on our metronome here. Wanted to leave a lot of space here in the beginning, then bring in the syncopation. Especially when it drops down, that's when I really wanted the bass to come in. That's when everything gets dark and heavy. Pretty simple. This little run here, I'm hitting that diminished note, the one right before the right under the root note. That's always a, a fun little trick, just to hit the uh, the note right before the root note, um, right as the the bass line ends and it loops in a kind of dark, uh, spooky way. That sounds really cool. So um, that's you know that's easy enough. You guys, I think most people have bass lines in their heads. It's not. That, that's that's why most people make beats, right? They want to have a big bang and bass line. Um, if you need any help with this, please ask in the comments if you have any specific questions. But uh, I like to think I kept it pretty simple. I didn't mix the sound really at all. Um, I had a sound good eyes around there to try it. It's obviously muted now because it didn't sound good. I can actually go ahead and just delete that. Um, and we'll get into the kick drum. There's a limiter on here. We'll get into the side chaining and stuff later. But right now we're just going through the, the patterns and the basics here. Um, so I made my little percussion loop. This was where I, you know, really started to get bouncy with the percussion, like get the idea out there. I wanted something, like I said, with a lot of space that really just hits on those, those down beats and gets your head bobbing. So if you hear that with the metronome again, oh, I don't need the metronome. Let's just hear it all together. And then second, I made the actual hi-hat pattern. So this is like in a modular way where I can have, you know, the, the lesser pattern on its own and other parts where I don't have, you know, I don't want to have the hi-hats going the whole time. So the actual hi-hat pattern itself, um, this one's actually pretty simple too. Um, it's a lot of just little 16th notes and... This is the only real complicated part. This is really just... Then right here, um, it's you know the way to make this sound cool is just do your fast runs. Make sure to change up the speeds as you do different runs. So this one's a little faster than this one, and then these rolls are both the same speed as this. And uh, you change the pitches of the notes, and you know change them at different intervals. So this one goes down faster, um, and this one just goes down one note at a time. This one goes down two notes at a time. Just little pieces of variety like. Like that will help a lot um and one thing i want to do is just like a little touch up that'll make this sound even better is you can just kind of take some of these random notes here you know make a little pattern in your head and just get these a little push up one or maybe down you know whichever way you want to do it whatever sounds good with your specific hi-hat sound just gives a little extra flavor a little extra sauce some subtle little changes that will keep that hi-hat pattern from sounding so like loopy and repetitive as the song goes on. Um, the only other thing I added to, so, so the reason this sounds so impactful when it drops down is because I add in these, these big ride cymbals, these crash cymbal sounding things. And that combined with the chord change down and then adding in these strings just makes that big impact. So let's hear it all together here. You've got an explanation of all the parts and pieces. One more little thing I did add was this little. Got some delay on it. Just a little vocal pump. You know, you can use those things in all kinds of different ways. So you can see how it all flows together. One long pattern. I add a big effect spiral down here, just sampled that, and we move into the break. So let's let's break down how I did this. This is actually really simple and a clever little trick that I'll show you guys um, that'll help you a lot. So I hear a lot of people like, oh man, I can't think of how to progress this beat or where to take it. I don't want to change it up too drastically, especially if you're trying to sell beats, you want to keep it consistent a to B, you know, so people can write their hooks and stuff and keep and keep it bouncing. Uh, so what I did here is I took that same flute pattern, right? And I added this half speed gross beat. 
This is the only thing that I did in this beat that costs money, other than, you know, FL Studio itself. Um, but this is included in the in the FL Studio, I believe, the producer bundle. Um, it's the, the second tier of, of the FL Studio edition, so well, I, which I recommend, because there's a lot of stuff that you get in, including Gross Beat, which I use in pretty much every beat. But if you just go to the presets momentary, you've probably heard of this if you've watched a lot of producer videos and stuff, and just select uh, half speed. Okay, so that's the first thing I did, but how did I get it to sound so airy? I have two reverbs here. I, I'm sure you saw, I mentioned this one earlier, but you, you might have been wondering, oh, what's this one? This one was off earlier. But you can see I automated the mix level of the gross beat and the reverb on at this point. This reverb, I started with the cathedral preset. And I just turned the bass all the way down, turned the decay down quite a bit, adjusted the high and low cut to my liking for the sound and then cranked the dry level down. And I'll show you why that's important, and here's the difference. See, so you're hearing it in its full glory pretty much there, but I want it to be a little more subdued here. I want this to be the break, right? So if I turn it down, you're not hearing the dry signal. You're not hearing the unreverbed sound. You're just hearing the wet, just the reverb of it, essentially. So you get that big spacey sound because I wanted these strings here. Remember the strings from before? That beautiful lyrical layer, not the hard, not these ones, these ones. Wrote some long legato notes, a little bass line, kind of similar to the bass line from the, uh, from the 808 to support this whole, uh, this whole measure. And then I, brought, I kept these strings here to keep that, uh, that little consistent pump going. Now, one change I want to make here that I, another touch up is this clap is really loud. Everything about this is great. But that that really just sticks out to me. Great. So what I did there was I uh, you can control, you know, your velocity and your pan on your piano roll here. You can also filter notes. I don't think most people know this, but uh, instead of opening a fruity filter and all that crap, you can just turn the cutoff frequency down a little bit. You can even control the resonance, but uh, for this case, I just wanted to basically do a little low pass filter on them and uh, make them a little, a little softer. Or is that a high pass filter? I don't know. You know what I mean. Now, one more thing I also wanted to add here is I feel like this break is cool. And what I did here is I just moved, I turned off the gross beat halfway through this. So you're hearing the full flute pattern, but with still that spacey reverb on it. And you'll see this is kind of building to something here. I'm going to add one more sound and I'm going to keep that lower level one as a layer back here. Um, but we'll get there. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I want to add something here. Maybe just like something really subtle. I'm thinking maybe like a guitar. So let's try like a nylon guitar. And um, I'll show you guys a little hack for some some extra melody stuff. So since I already have my main like melody and harmony here, right? Um, I kind of know what notes I'm hitting. I think I can start off with like an F sharp minor chord since that's my root note. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a new pattern with my uh, my nylon guitar here. It's kind of like a classical sounding guitar. It's great for beats like these. Um, we're gonna just go to a minor chord here. Go to F sharp. So yeah, that totally works. Um, we can maybe add like a... That octave sounds great. Um, I was gonna try and add a different, but octave's great there. Kept the beat pretty straightforward. Um, the only other note that I could see, there's A and G sharp here, and we're hitting A, so we could I'm gonna control A and then Alt G, so I'm ungrouping mm -hmm. these. So I can play these notes individually instead of as a chord. So I might be able to throw in that G sharp somewhere. Okay, I kind of already have an idea, so we can better. a little too low of a note there rock with me guys bear with me we're gonna find a cool so we might even ooh, try that diminish note. and 
then the second part's already done for us because we have these chords from earlier. Oops. So I'm gonna I just went to the old pattern from the strings, control A, control C. So I selected all and I copied them. I don't I didn't need to select all there. And then I pasted them here. I can pretty much just get rid of these because I wanna, you know, play them in a different rhythm. We'll even get rid of that one. I'm gonna hit control L. And that's going to articulate those notes out. Except for the last one, for some reason, it always makes you do that on your own. So. I'm going to bring these down an octave. Might be able to bring that G sharp back in again here. Lead into the next chord. Yes. That's the way. Awesome. So we've got a nice little chord progression here for some guitar, but obviously it sounds kind of shitty. It sounds kind of unrealistic, right? So step one, we're going to select the uh, the chords here, not the little off notes, just the chords. And uh, we're going to hit Alt S, and that's going to pull up our strum tool. Um, I've kind of already got it set up in a good way, but uh, play around with these tools. You can use it a bunch of different ways. So we can do strokes down, like if we're stroking the strings from the highest string to the lowest. We can even slow that down. But we might more do a more traditional, like how you normally strum a guitar from uh, from the lowest string up. And now I'm realizing here I also want the octaves on these chords because it sounds a little empty. But don't worry, we're gonna add some higher notes to this as well and give it some more, some more juice. I'm gonna make sure this all sounds sounds good here. Beautiful. Okay. I want to give away that uh, that next drop. Yeah, I'm gonna let y'all y'all build that tension. Okay. So. select these and I'm gonna strum these a little f slower nah 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 faster yeah I should have done this before I strummed but I'll show you how to get around it I want to take these chords actually I don't want the octaves on these I just want the actual chord themselves I'm gonna hit control C control V you know what? Just so I don't get confused, actually, we're gonna do this a kind of a roundabout way. We're gonna clone this guitar, which is not a big deal because they're sound fonts and they're not super CPU intensive. I uh, selected them all and hit Control Up arrow key and raised it an octave. Now I'm gonna hit Control Q after quantizing to a beat. Then I'm gonna hit a Control Q to actually quantize all the notes. So magnet, you wanna snap to grid to a beat before you do stuff like that. Um, and I'm gonna do that Control L again. And now we've just got those bass chords up high, though. You're probably wondering why the fuck are you doing this? That's like shit. Okay, we're gonna hit Alt A. We're gonna arpeggiate them. We might have to bring it down another octave, but we're gonna arpeggiate these notes. Um, I'm gonna crank this time multiplier because I want it to be a slower one. I'm gonna do a flip, turn the range down so we're not hitting such high notes. Um, yeah, we'll set to flip. Let's do time. Fucking fantastic. Now, obviously, this is a little plain, so we're going to do what I call note farming. We're going to pluck out notes that we want. Um, I think these C sharps get a little meh, so we can just do a like. I'd even just like that and articulate. Might let these all kind of ring out like it would on an actual guitar, you know, if you're just plucking it as a chord. Oh, 
that might be the move. See, I'm just playing around with notes here. Sorry I'm not saying much, but uh, I'm literally just moving shit around, and I saw that the G sharp should be the hit here, so we're gonna carry that over to here as well. Uh, that pattern there, that little loop is nice. Stretch these out a little bit. Beautiful. Okay. So, it still doesn't sound super realistic and convincing, right? Sticks out in the mix. It's it's not great. So we're gonna put it on a mixer channel. Turn it down first and foremost, and we're gonna add some reverb. Pretty reverb too. Start with the default here. Uh, did I just? Oh. Got to, we have two different guitar tracks here, so make sure we mix them both on there. I do want them both on the same mixer channel, though. Uh, I definitely want that dry signal there. Take it down the early reflection level in the wet. Take the bass completely out. Turn up the low cut. Turn down the high cut. One thing I do want to try is throw an effector on here and going for the lo-fi preset. Make sure you turn off the bypass and I'm gonna drag it over here. Or instead of that, let's try isotope vinyl. Not entirely sure if this is free or not. I don't remember if I paid for it, but it's probably pretty cheap. I have a little preset I'm just gonna try. You can detune it a little bit with the warp. So you can already hear how much better it sounds than when it started. I wonder how that would sound transitioning. I'll turn this first chord down a little bit. Uh, no, it doesn't sound good with the, uh, the half speed flute. This needs to come in here for sure. I'm considering a little filter on here. Let's try tiny speakers. Turn this down a little bit. Now I kind of want to see how this sounds on the drop here, but uh, before I do that, I want to break down what I added here during the drop. So the second drop, when it, this track really fully comes in, uh, it's the same bass line, same hi-hat pattern, uh, it's kept that all consistent. The only things I added were brass. Um, so I have three different layers, one center, one left, one right. I use TPS module, just regular presets um, that are built into here. I just found the ones I liked and uh, didn't really mess with them at all, except added a little reverb in post. Um, this is a sound font, large brass shots, so. Just layered them all up, a few hits a piece, just when it drops, basically. Um, and then I had a separate layer for the flute, and I put it on its own mixer channel. I cloned the flute again, put it on its own mixer channel, panned it a little to the right, and this one has that half speed, gross speed on it, but it does not have the airy reverb. So you're hearing that bouncy boop, boo doo doo. The guitar does not sound good there. It's a little too full and chaotic. It's perfect for the breaks though. And we're gonna put that on the other break as well. It keeps the, uh, you know, every eight bars rule and tag. You wanna add something ever interesting every few bars at least. Be interesting to try a gross beat pattern on here now that I think about it. If you go to the flanging preset and do wish wash 2. Yes, you get that little miniature reverb sound going and it's beautiful. I 
Just gotta make sure to... I want to cut these last chords off here because I feel like it just gets a little noisy. And the reverse reverb just cuts into the drop, so... I mean, you've pretty much heard it all when it comes to this beat. Uh, I threw in some random effects and risers. You can find billions of these throughout the internet, Reddit, wherever you want to find it. Little effects like that, they're everywhere. The only other little detail I added that I haven't mentioned so far is this cymatics loop. Um, it's just a little percussion loop. It's normally at 128 BPM, and I slowed it down. Um, it just adds a little texture here. Uh, oh, yeah, the kick drums. That's what it was. Knew I was forgetting something. So, I've got a nice thumpy kick drum sample here. I did throw a really heavy sound goodizer on this. Uh, I know I've sinned, but it actually sounds really good. So, that's all that matters, right? Uh, I did a side chain. Uh, I send it to the 808, and I cranked that actually to 125% because I really want it to punch through. And then I use a fruity limiter here. Um, you make sure you turn that to one after you've linked it. And then just play around with these knobs until you get it where you want for your specific sounds. I wanted it hitting really hard, so that's what mine looks like. And uh, yeah, that way your kick drum punches through that uh, that big meaty 808. I turn up the 808 a little bit. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, I would show you uh, Isotope and stuff, but I know it's a very expensive plugin and most people can't afford it. So you can achieve most of this with Maximus. I'm actually just going to replace this with Maximus. It's not going to sound quite as good, but uh, you can still get some some good mastering out of it. I mean, there's some decent presets on here. Clear master. I mean, that really doesn't even sound all that different. So um, without it, though, it's a lot softer. The main thing, though, that people always ask me, oh, man, it sounds so clean. How do you get your shit to hit so clean? It's just starting with good sounds. Um, go through a billion different kits. Like, if you see, for example, like, here's one of the kits I use a lot. Like, there's a hundred of each sound in this kit. So, you got to spend the time to look through them and find quality ones. And it absolutely pays off. Trust me. Um, that, that's how you get that clean sound. I mean, you can just throw, like I said, you can literally just throw a Maximus on there. And it'll... Uh, It'll sound fantastic. Clear master preset. I mean, obviously, you're going to want to toy with it and stuff, but yeah. That's pretty much it, folks. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you click that like and subscribe, and uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. If you have any feedback about the video, things you'd like me to do differently, um, any suggestions for the beat, um, it's already sold, so whatever, but, uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all watching. Oh, and, uh, don't forget, join Reddit slash Beat Battle and participate in Season 2 of the battle. Join the league.
He, he climbing the turnbuckle. 